Well, armed men have sabotaged a Salvadoran nonprofit agency dedicated to finding children who went missing three decades ago during a time when the United States was backing Salvador's military government. On Thursday, the intruders broke into the Pro Busqueda uh, Association for Missing Children, destroyed four of its offices, and set fire to its archives. They also stole computers, possibly containing sensitive information, such as cases of children stolen by members of the military between 1980 and 1982. Efforts to investigate those cases have been obstructed by the military's refusal to share DNA records. Shortly after the attack, El Salvador's human rights ombudsman, David Morales, visited the organization and commented on what had happened. On a group that struggles for the community and tries to help victims of armed conflict, we haven't seen this type of attack for a long time. Traditionally, the political purpose is to intimidate, pursue, and destroy information that shows what happened in the past. Morales told the Associated Press the attack could be related to an appeal before the country's Supreme Court that would eliminate amnesty for people who carried out war crimes. And he requested the attorney general to prioritize investigating the attack. For more, we're going to San Salvador, El Salvador, where we're joined via Democracy Now! video stream by Montserrat Martinez, who works in the investigative unit of the organization that was just raided um, and with its files destroyed on Thursday. In Washington, we're joined by Alexis Stumbelas, the executive director of CISFACE, the Committee in Solidarity with the People of El Salvador. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Montserrat. Describe what happened in your offices in San Salvador and why this is so critical at this moment, as uh, your organization comes uh, that started with Archbishop Romero. Um, uh, he was gunned down by U.S.-backed military, paramilitary forces in 1980. Um, why these files were so important that have been destroyed? Uh, good morning. Uh, well, all the files that were uh, taken from our office uh, contain legal information and testimonies of cases of forced disappearance of children during the armed conflict. And for us, are the proof uh, to uh, put these cases into the national uh, system of justice in El Salvador. So we are still evaluating the damages and the kind of information they took. But uh, we are afraid that this information could be helpful for us, for our legal department, to put these cases into the legal system. And uh, what has happened in uh, recent months uh, in terms of being able to come to terms with what happened back then uh, that, uh, that might have prompted people to uh, do this attack? Well, in the last months, there has been some events in El Salvador that are coincidence in the time. And we now uh, ha we need to know uh, the relation between these events. But for example, we had the uh, the problem with the Tutela Legal, is an organization created by the Archbishop Monsignor Romero, where uh, they contain a lot of files, also and testimonies of human rights violation during the Arab conflict. And the actual Archbishop of San Salvador uh, decided to shoot down. Uh, that organization and is not allowed to anybody to uh, obtain that information or those files. That's one of the event. The other one is uh, uh, what will happen with the amnesty law. Uh, there is an initiative to put down this, uh, this law and now we are respecting the decision of the court. Uh, yesterday we have this uh, violent attack uh, against Probusqueda. So, well, we can think that there is a relation between these events, although in our case we need to evaluate first our damages and the kind of information uh, that they, these three men uh, took with them. I want to bring Alexis Stambelis into this conversation, executive director of CISPACE. She's in Washington. Um, explain the significance of this um, in terms of trying to find justice in El Salvador for the thousands of people who were killed during the 1980s. Yeah, I mean, one thing that's really important to understand about the amnesty law is, you know, it was put in place in 1993 by the right-wing Arena government. The Arena Party, of course, was founded by the father of the Salvadoran death squads, Roberto Davison. And so, since putting in—the the law, the law was put in at the end of the war in 1993, just before the U.N. Truth Commission would issue its report, naming that the Salvadoran state or state forces were responsible for over 85 percent of the 75,000 
civilian deaths that occurred during the Civil War. And so it's really important to understand that since that time, literally no one has been brought to justice or brought to criminal charges in El Salvador for any of the human rights atrocities that happened, even, you know, incredibly huge events like the El Mosote massacre in 1981. And so it's been this Where ongoing struggle. people were killed. Yes, and, you know, the Inter-American Human Rights Court in Costa Rica last year charged the Salvadoran state with responsibility for those crimes and actually ordered the state not to allow the amnesty law to be an obstacle to that. And so it certainly looks like the, um, you know, abrupt closure of Tutela Legal, which holds 50,000 records, including 80 percent of the cases that were used in the U.N. Truth Commission, that being cut off in terms of access, no one can get in to see if the archives are even safe at this point in time. Um, and now the attack on Probusca, that certainly looks like the right-wing oligarchy, who are the ones that stand to gain or stand to lose, of course, the most if the amnesty law is ever overturned, are, you know, reaching increasingly violent and desperate measures to make sure that those, that evidence never comes Alexis to light. Alexis Demelswin, thank you for being with us. That wraps up.